So how do you now deal with the question of and responses to evil and suffering? It's here, it's in the world, what's its purpose? Is there a purpose to it or is it completely and utterly meaningless? Well, some people say actually it can teach valuable lessons. If handled correctly, bravery will only be seen if there is danger. True love can only be seen in the context of maybe where it really costs something. But patience also can only be seen against impatience. So clearly the ability to learn through suffering and deepen our understanding of who we are as human beings is partly one of the things that you could say suffering is for. The second thing is that actually the problem of evil or the response to it primarily is because we have been given by God, a Christian would say, human free will. And without the ability to choose right and wrong, we are not really human beings. And otherwise, you'd be a robot, a bit like R2, D2. You cannot choose freely unless you have the choice to choose the wrong thing as well. And that's part of what it means to be a human being. Another response to the problem of evil and suffering is, it's a mystery. Actually, only God in his wisdom knows why people suffer. And the purpose ultimately will be revealed, not now, but in the future. You've got to remember that we only see our lives, a very small part. And if God exists for a religious person, God sees everything. And so there's an element of faith and trust that what is going on here may be a mystery to us, but one day it will be revealed. It may not seem like a good answer, but it's an answer. So, if you were to ask a Christian, how do you respond to the question of evil, or the problem of evil and suffering, what would they say? One, they'd remind you about the Adam and Eve story. That evil entered as a result of Adam and Eve. That's one explanation of suffering and evil. Two, it's a test. Like Job, he refused to help give up on his faith and is rewarded by God for this. So some Christians think suffering is used by God to test their faith as a way of proving themselves or proving that that faith is genuine and real. How do you know the strength of a piece of rope unless it's tested? You don't. The same is true of the spiritual life and suffering as well. Some people do think, and Christians think, in responding to it that actually it's a way of God punishing or judging people for doing wrong things. That actually in the Bible there are stories and ways where God has punished people for doing bad things. And there are some that think God is like this picture where he throws a thunderbolt down to stop people or to punish people who have done evil acts. Well, that leads us nicely on to, well how then do you choose between doing right and avoiding evil as well? Firstly, if you're a religious person, you think your conscience, the thing that tells you what's right and wrong, is like the voice of God. This conscience is like the good part and the bad part of you. The good part is God's voice, and the bad part is not like the devil's voice, but is that voice, the selfish part of your nature. And so in order to listen to God, you need to listen to that good part of you. So that's how you would avoid evil, by understanding and listening to your conscience. The second thing is obviously the Bible. The Bible from a Christian perspective is one of the most is the most important book. It has lots of stories in, it has the Ten Commandments in, uh, love your neighbour as you love yourself, don't seek revenge, um, and lots of other teachings that instruct a Christian to do their money, to teach the poor, or to work with the poor about how to live their lives, about what's acceptable and not acceptable. Um, and that gives them guidance on how to choose to do the right thing and avoid evil. There is a problem for some Christians even with this. It was written so long ago that they think it can't really offer advice to people today. But most Christians would use it as a way of guiding their own moral behaviour. <coughs> I think the most important uh, aspect of choosing to do right and avoiding evil has to come from the life and example of Jesus. He told parables, he lived his life, he offered his life and gave his life from a Christian perspective as, uh, if you like, a sacrifice for mankind. He did miracles, he suffered and, he give, and that gives Christians strength as well. 
So Christians actually look to follow this man's example of how to handle and cope with suffering. Here's the image of a nail being driven into his hands. Clearly, from a Christian perspective, suffering is a part of life, and this image sort of sums that up. So a Christian would say, don't be surprised that there is suffering. If Jesus suffered, then to some degree all human beings will have suffering. But you need to have faith like Jesus did, and hopefully that suffering will not be in vain. Again, it's an answer that they would give to the question of suffering and avoiding evil. Also, they would use church, Christian friends and prayer to help Christians make the right choices. Prayer is really important from a Christian perspective to help them guide and ask God and to help them uh, not give in maybe to evil things or bad things. And so they would pray to God, ask him for the strength to do the right thing and even ask him to help them make the right decision at the right time as well. So that's another way they would choose good and try and avoid evil as well. Also, again, the most obvious one is upbringing. Christians would, through their parents, in the same way you and I have been taught by their parents, to do good and avoid evil. If you're a Christian parent, again, maybe prayer, going to church, using the Bible, is part of that process as well. So avoiding evil uh, and um, doing good, again, could be used and it could be part of your upbringing to do good.